Good morning. I'm Laura Zervis, and I'm a registered dietitian and licensed nutritionist, and I'm so happy to be here. Today, um, it's March 1st. It's the beginning of National Nutrition Month, so that's very special to me. Uh, so we have some great recipes, and we're also going to talk about National Nutrition Month's theme, which is um, uh, fueling for the future. So what it taught, what it, the, the message is, is to not only obviously fuel our bodies for today, um, but, you know, so we have feeding them and fueling them. So we have a sustainable food system so that we still have things in the future for future generations. So we'll talk a little bit more about what that means and, and how we can do that every day. But first, let's get started. We have so much to cook today. So I thought I would take a spin off of that and talk about just fueling our bodies for the day. So often um, when I meet with a new client, they might have something they're struggling with, whether it's weight management, diabetes, heart disease, um, or whether they're just um, some. Sometimes people uh, reach out to a dietitian because they just don't feel great. And I think it's a really good place to start to check out with our nutrition. And what we do when we sit down with a dietitian is, of course, they will look over your medical history. They will look over any lab work that you have. They will look over any medications that you're on. But the most important part of your visit with a dietitian is that initial interview. And we spend a lot of time trying to find out as much as we can about you, whether you have a commute, whether you sit in a cubicle all day, whether you you're up and down a ladder all day with shingles on your, uh, you know, carrying a bundle of shingles on your back. Obviously, those people are going to have um, different energy requirements, whether you're a busy mom, whether um, you have a stressful job, all of those go into play. Um, and we also, of course, there's, there's many other parts of that initial assessment that we do. We also um, do the subjective global assessment where we, uh, you know, look at your features, your hair, skin, your nails, those kind of things. But today we're going to focus on fueling for the day, because probably the number one complaint that I get is I'm tired all the time. I don't have the energy to keep up with my children. I don't have the energy for my hobbies. I don't have the energy to do um, some work around my house. I don't have, um, you know, I, I just want to sleep when I get home from work. You know, um, many people, um, they might work till later in the afternoon, four or five o'clock. They might have a commute ahead of them. When they get home, they're very tired. They don't feel like prepping dinner. So we're going to talk about how do we stay fueled all day long. So at two o'clock in the afternoon that we feel just as good as we did at 10 o'clock in the morning, that we always have that energy that, that we could pull from uh, to do our tasks every day. And what we don't want to do, we know that we want to grab the right foods and in the right proportions, obviously, or not so obviously, a heavy fat, heavy sodium, heavy carbohydrate meal, um, uh, rich and simple carbohydrates can leave us feeling lethargic, um, much caffeine, you know, a lot of caffeine in our diet. While it could give us that initial increase in energy, we could obviously come crash down, um, you know, a few hours later. So what we want to, uh, we don't want to get into the habit of at two o'clock in the afternoon, grabbing a coffee, grabbing a soda, grabbing um, sugar, anything like that. And sometimes we're tempted to because we feel so lousy. So the number one thing I'm going to say, of course, is stay hydrated. It's so important to drink lots of water all day long to stay to stay hydrated. Sometimes when we're not hydrated, we mistake that for hunger. Um, also, um, not being hydrated can leave us lethargic. It can leave us with a big headache. Also, the kind of the same symptoms we can with a um, poor diet. So let's say that we start with the water. What we're going to do today is I'm going to make a breakfast, a mid-morning snack, a lunch, and a dinner, and a nighttime snack, or that snack could be wherever you want it. Um, and the, the beauty of this meal that I have, or this menu that I have created for one day, is that it's really well balanced. So it's a good template for you. Um, it's 45% of the calories are going to come from carbohydrate, 25% are going to come from protein, 30% is going to come from fat, less than 10%, which in our menu today, about 6% of those calories are going to come from saturated fat. This um, menu for today is also less than the recommended 
Um, the, the limit on sodium is 2,300 milligrams per day. This is gonna provide approximately 1,700. Um, so that box is checked. And this, uh, this menu that we also have for today is gonna give us 39 grams of fiber. Fiber is so underrated. We've talked about it many times in many other classes, so I'm not gonna bore you, but it's so difficult to get that fiber number. Uh, many people fall short of that every day. They have to rely on supplementation. So again, just another piece of the puzzle. We wanna make sure that we have all the pieces of our puzzle. So let's get cooking. Um, the first thing that we're going to do, or one thing that I did ahead of time, uh, was I did the breakfast because it was baking in the oven for quite some time and I didn't want them to burn because we're gonna be using the oven for other things. So let's get our second item. We'll talk about breakfast in a minute, but let's get um, our dinner in the oven. So that has sufficient time to cook. And I'm looking for my acorn squash. I did wash it and peel our label off. Acorn squash is wonderful. We, we've used these in class before. Um, so many things you could do them, so, so many different ways you could serve them. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to make, um, we're going to bake the acorns. We're going to cut it in half. We're going to bake it. We're going to get it nice and brown. And we're going to make a little stuffing to go inside of it. Um, it's a quinoa stuffing, and it's going to have onions and garlic. And there's a couple of options, and I hope you can make it your own. Um, I like to play around with this differently every time I make it. So let's get started, and we'll talk about that. Okay, and I'll show you what I'm doing. Let me just move some of my pans around here. Um, the only problem I have with <laughs> acorn squash is cutting them in half. They can be very tricky. So um, what I like to do uh, is always make a flat edge, a little bit difficult on these because um, it's, if we cut the bottom edge, then we have the stem to deal with over here. So I'm just going to go right down the middle. And if you get it started, there we go. Just might have one half that's a little bit bigger than the other. So I, I already washed this. Remember, we don't use any bacteria from the outside skin into the inside. Um, and then we're just going to scoop out these seeds. So again, um, butternut squash, really rich in fiber, um, rich in vitamin A, vitamin C, high in potassium. And um, like I said, high it is high in fiber. So yes, there's some good carbohydrates, good complex carbs in here. It's also very high in fiber. Real easy. I have some olive oil right here, and I'm just gonna put, I just need to put a, a quarter teaspoon in there, put it in each one, and then you know, just take it with your hand, go like that, and I'm just gonna grab a little bit more, turn it over, because we don't want this side to burn, so this side should be greased as well. A tiny bit of oil on my pan, and that's all. I, I You can season this. I typically season it when it comes out. We could just do, I. Sometimes I use a little bit of kosher salt, but we're gonna be adding some later. Rose. Okay, and just get that. And a nice hot oven, if you have to get them, that's fantastic. If you don't have to pay too, uh, you just wanna put them on your pan. Um, let me get those in the oven. Okay, so we're going to also do the second part of this. Um, the second part of this recipe, which is create the stuffing because we want to make sure that um, we have sufficient time to cook that. So let me grab my prep for this. And this is real easy. Let me adjust the camera so you can see all these delicious ingredients. Okay, there we go. And um, we have our squash in the oven. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, saute in here. I'm gonna add a little olive oil. About a tablespoon. And we'll get that going. And we're going to saute our onions.
let that go for, we'll heat that up for a little bit. What we're gonna do is we're going to saute our onions for a few minutes, then add some garlic. Then we're gonna add the quinoa to coat it really well. And then we're gonna add our water and then that's going to cook. So let me get that um, onions in there and then we'll talk about our breakfast. And um, what we have is about two thirds cup of an onion or medium onion, whatever you call it. And we're not gonna caramelize them. We're just going to sweat them and get them nice and tender. Okay, so let's get those going. Um, also, so I have some optional ingredients for this one. So oh, let me go through the ingredients while our onions are sauteing. We have our quinoa. You could use, if you want to make this really interesting, we could use a, um, different variations of quinoa. There's different colors. There's red. There's assorted. Um, I also have my garlic that I already chopped up. And today um, I'm going to use cranberries, some about a third cup of uh, cranberries, dried cranberries, and about a quarter cup of pine nuts. Um, in addition to everything else we have here today. And so you could add instead, you could add pomegranate arrows, you could add chopped walnuts, but we have walnuts in another recipe. So I just wanted to mix it up a little bit. Um, also it was difficult to find the pomegranate today. So I thought, well, we'll just you know, um, go with our cranberries because they get nice and plump while they're cooking. So I thought that would work together nicely. Let's give this another stir. So while our onions are doing, the other thing that you could do to this to add to our little stuffing recipe is you could either add some kale or you could add some spinach, anything like that, that you, you know, like you could even add zucchini um, chunks, you could add mushroom chunks, any kind of um, vegetable that you would like. Um, let's see where we want to go. Okay, so let's add our garlic. Again, it doesn't need to be cooked very long because it's going to it's going to put it along again with our quinoa together. We just want to wet to get out the flavor. Let me check that, make sure that oven is good here. Yeah. Okay. So as soon as we get that, I'm going to add a tiny bit more olive oil in there. Just so we can coat our quinoa really well. Show you what that looks like. You just want to make sure that you get it nice and well coated. Then we're going to add water. And then we're just going to let this simmer while we talk and then it should be ready by the time we're finished. And then we can stuff our um, acorn squash. Okay, so what we're going to talk about next is our breakfast. And let me get everything, let me set this aside. That's everything that we need for our. And we have our yogurt. Berries. So the first thing that we're going to make, and I'm just going to keep the camera down here for you, is just a little parfait. And this is a great way to start your day. Uh, you can use whatever percentage of fat that you like. 
from the yogurt. Today I had a 2% yogurt, but the yogurt that I used in my in our demonstration was a um, 0%. So I like to put a nice scoop in there and I, it's about three quarters of a cup. So one and a half scoops, which is a pretty generous. And then we're going to top it with our berries, um, walnuts. And remember walnuts are our only So this is a half ounce. And remember, you always want to measure these things because they do have, uh, they're very caloric. So there is a thing as, as eating too much of a good thing, right? Because at the end of the day, it is all about those calories. So I like to put some on there like that. And then we have our honey and I have a teaspoon. I typically um, measured this before. I typically just drizzle a little bit only because um, if you do, if you measure the honey into a teaspoon, sometimes it's uh, difficult to get out there and I just didn't wanna do that today. Um, and then we could add other fruits to this too as well. We could add strawberries, we could add raspberries, bananas, anything that you have on hand makes a really nice. And then here, what I made before class started. So this goes, this is going to be our morning breakfast, and this has um, 20 grams of protein, and it has 19 grams of net carb. When you have a nice carbohydrate balanced meal like that, um, it will leave you feeling fueled throughout the morning. And many people notice when I, that's another question I ask as I go and I review um, food logs with people. You know, when you have a certain breakfast, if you have, um, if you have cold cereal and milk, um, how how full does that keep you? Can you last to lunch? Do you are you looking for something at ten o'clock? As compared to if you had like an overnight oatmeal that has overnight oats and yogurt and berries and things like that, or a protein shake with some berries and spinach and some almond milk, versus some of the simple carbohydrate things like maybe um, just a piece of white bread toast with butter and jelly, which you could, um, if you pair that with a piece of fruit, you could be well over um, 30 to 40 grams of carbohydrate, very little protein, leave you feeling very, um, uh, it could leave you feeling hungry quickly. Um, so what we wanna do is make sure that we get that really good balance of carbohydrate. So the next thing that I had made was our um, apple, cinnamon, banana, oatmeal cups. So they were really easy to make. I just didn't think that they um, baked for a while. I didn't think we would have enough time to do them. So let me tell you about them. Uh, what we did was we took um, a cup of milk, a half cup of Greek yogurt, the Greek yogurt that I had right there, um, and then some a little bit of maple syrup, um, a mashed banana, a whole apple, some cinnamon, um, and nutmeg and mix that all together and applesauce. There were no eggs in here. There's no flour in here. So it's really just like an oatmeal cup. Um, and you put them into, you want to take a muffin pan, a muffin tin that has 12, obviously um, muffins that have, that can make 12 muffins. And you just put a scoop in each one. You fill it up to the top. It's not like a cupcake where you can only fill it so far and it's going to rise. They're not going to go anywhere. Um, so you fill up the muffin tin, um, well greased, and they come out real nicely. And this makes a really nice, I'm just going to open one up for you here. And it's really just a convenient way to eat oatmeal. And it doesn't need anything else. It's all in here. Um, all good stuff. Um, I did use about a quarter cup of maple syrup. So it does have some sweetener in it. So you could change that sweetener. You could leave it out if you like. Uh, that made 12. So I'm thinking about, you know, a quarter cup over 12 muffins. It wasn't too bad. Uh, these had, let me look at my nutrition. These had eight grams of protein. They have 30 grams of carb, but they also have a lot of fiber. There were seven grams of fiber in there. So a really good, um, nice snack for the morning. This could also um, go 
go out the door with you, maybe pair it up with a hard cooked egg. Uh, they can be frozen, they can be refrigerated and uh, microwaved or if you put them in the freezer, if you take them out and put them in the refrigerator the night before, they'll be ready to go for you in the morning. If you want them a little bit warmer, you could put them in the microwave, but they last uh, very well. And you could change, uh, today I did apples in them. You could put blueberries in them. You could put raspberries in them. It's a great way. And this is when we're talking about the, going back to the theme of National Nutrition Month and sustainability, use what you have on hand. If you have bananas that are past their prime that maybe you don't want to eat as a cut up fruit, it might be a great idea to look, you know, yes, of course there's banana bread, but putting it in something like this where it takes the place of an oil um, along with the applesauce. I think that's a great idea to use up. And that's, that's part of it. Cook what you need um, and utilizing leftovers very well. So that's something that chefs are good at, um, always seeing what we have on hand, looking around and uh, putting that to good use. So I'm gonna put our, um, muff, our, our um, cups, oatmeal cups aside. So, so far for the day, between our oatmeal, uh, between our yogurt bowl and our oatmeal cups, we are at, and I have this tally here, we're at 20, uh, 29 grams, 21 for breakfast, eight for our snack. So that's already 29 grams of protein. Sometimes I, um, when I meet with clients that tell me that they're tired, they're not getting anywhere near their protein number. So really important to do that. Let's set these aside. And then we're going to work on, really like this tuna salad. It's one of my favorites. I think before we made one with yogurt and a Dijon mustard, which was really nice. This is even lighter. I like this so much because there's so many vegetables in here. It's so light. It's nice and high in protein. And it's, I don't want to say refreshing, but I guess light is just the word. So, and it's, it's an excellent source of protein. It's low in carb. And there's some different serving variations that we're going to talk about. So let's just, first, we're going to make our dressing. Which is very simple. It's olive oil and um, lemon. I've cut our lemon and we are just going to squeeze those. Let me put the, uh, adjust the camera. And we're just gonna slice them in half and we need about a third cup. So it depends. I mean, lately the lemons that I had, uh, you, need, you need several lemons to get that much. So uh, it's just that time of the year but they should be pretty soon, they should be here, okay? You don't wanna overpower your tuna. It's such a light, light, white, you know, meat. You don't want to overpower with something. Lemon juice is perfect, olive oil. I mean, when you put mayonnaise, of course it's, uh, has its own taste as well, but this is just a lot lighter. You really get to enjoy the taste. Uh, you're not masking that tuna at all. So what we're going to do is I'm going to add it right to my bowl. And I had a seed go in there. Just get that out. That one wants to bite into a seed. And they're just, that's the, the thing. These lemons were so small, the seeds are so tiny, they went right through my strainer. Typically the big seeds, they caught, we have a few of them, typically the bigger seeds stay in the strainer part. And we are going to do with some olive oil in here. A little bit of garlic. Salt. I think fresh cracked pepper makes everything. We've got a nice little dressing there. So we'll set this aside and we'll. Okay, right. so get yourself a nice large stainless bowl. And what I did was I took 
um, I had drained um, two cans of tuna. So I have about 15 ounces of tuna here. And let it sit in the colander and let it get nice and dry. I see which bowls I have a little bit too much here. So there's a couple couple words about tuna because I get this question a lot. How much tuna is too much tuna? You know, typically, um, you know, two, three ounce servings are okay to have per week. Um, and the, the, but the best kind are the skipjack. Uh, it's a smaller fish. So what is the danger is the larger fish that's been alive for a longer period of time and it's been feeding and it contains more mercury. The middle of the road fish would be your yellowfin and your albacore. And the one that are um, have higher levels of mercury would be the bluefin and the So those ones could really add um, unwanted uh, mercury to our diet and in large levels can be toxic. So the next things that we're going to add are artichokes. And let me put them down here. I just have some canned artichokes. I did not get any that were marinated. Um, so they're just nice, simple ones. And artichokes are low in fat. They're rich in fiber, um, vitamins, and antioxidants, and minerals, obviously. Really high in folate, vitamin C and K. Um, and they also have some magnesium, I'm just gonna quarter them, some phosphorus. They're just an excellent um, excellent food to have around. And I like to keep, I'm just gonna keep slicing those and that's all I'm doing. And then I'll show you what I add uh, when I have the finished product. I like them too, because they have seven grams of fiber per serving. So again, getting that fiber number up. And I like to have a lot of these, of course, and we talk about this all the time, fresh is best um, as far as nutritional value. And then after that would be frozen and finally canned is, um, at the end. But there's some things like canned artichokes, black olives, garbanzo beans, that it's good to have some cans around. You could make a really fast meal um, with very little on hand and an inexpensive meal as well. So let's see that. Okay, and then we're going to add, I just have some sliced black olives. Just this so you can see this. And then some chickpeas. And I have some red peppers. I don't know, I might save those for the end. I think I'm not going to. I'm just going to just throw this around real gently too. You don't want to, you want to break up the tuna. So when you do have some, you get a little bite of everything. And it's not like your typical tuna salad that's going to um, come out in a perfect soup. Um, but still, it's really packed with flavor. So the nutrition on this, let me, let me get our dressing. Grams of protein, and we're also going to either put it on a wrap or we could put it on a um, bed of lettuce. I'm going to do both here today, and I'm just going to drizzle some of our dressing right over it. I don't know if I want all of it. Remember, you could always add more, more. How beautiful that looks. Okay, so let's just, um, what I'm gonna do is I have our balanced meat tortillas. And I love about the car balance, it's so very soft. It's one of the they're high in fiber. So they have 17 grams of carbohydrate per portion and per slice rather. And then they have 14 grams of 
fiber. So it's a wonderful way to get some fiber. Not all wraps are created equal. Sorry about that noise. Not all wraps are created equal. Um, you want to, you know, there's some fast food chains that have um, their tortillas have a of 45 grams of carbohydrate and nowhere near the fiber content that ours does today, the carb balanced ones. And they um, are around 300, over 300 calories. So you have to be very careful. Um, so when you're buying them at the grocery store, obviously you could read the label if we're out and about, we don't know what type of um, tortillas they use. So maybe when you're out and about, that might be a consideration if you were having this, maybe that would, you might wanna have it on a bed of lettuce. Let me just adjust the camera while I assemble this. And we're just going to put it here just like that. And we could lay a couple of our red onions, roasted, I mean, rest, roasted red peppers, and we'll just fold it up there and we have a nice little wrap. And then the other way that we could serve this is on it. So I just taken some uh, nice baby romaine, arranged it on a plate, and we'll just put a nice scoop. This makes mahogany and have We have all these ingredients in your pantry. We always have tuna. Well, it's, it's good to keep on hand. I don't know if we always have it, but it's great to have on hand. And um, peas and uh, black olives are very easy to keep on hand as well. So whenever you are between grocery shopping, um, whenever you're between orders, this is always a great way, especially if you happen to have your lettuce on hand. Like again, you could put this on a wrap. You could just eat it in a bowl as it is, however you want. So let me set this aside and then we will get working on our Meanwhile, we just give them sugar. Okay. Just going to turn the heat down while we finish talking about this. So we talked about the tuna, um, you know, just be careful the number of servings you have per week. Um, skipjack is the best. The bluefin and the big eye are the highest content of mercury and the yellow fin and albacore are somewhere in between there. So um, just wanted to recap that for you. for you. And let's see. And also one more thing about the artichokes, we talked about the nutrition content. They're one of the highest um, antioxidant containing uh, vegetables. So really good to incorporate into our diet, into our pattern, I should say. I don't like to say the word diet, um, even though I mean it in a way, I when I refer to diet, I mean as what are you eating? Um, I don't want to say, I don't want to infer that it's a restriction. It's our pattern. Um, our diet is what the common foods that we eat, our common pattern that we can, you know, that we have on a regular basis. So let me set this aside. I don't have it off the top of my head. So 21 at breakfast, eight for our snack, lunch was 22, and dinner's coming up. So we're doing really well. And I'm going to have this, I will have, um, in addition to having all the recipes and all the nutritional information, I'm going to show you how that looks in a day if you were to have everything. Sometimes, um, you know, and, and this really adds up, I believe this was under 1300 calories. So if you could imagine if you have, um, if you have a calorie restriction, and you're at 1300 calories, you could cut back on the on the portion size for this. If you have greater needs, if, you're, if your calorie needs are around 2000, this is a really good benchmark. This is what 1300 looks like. What do I need to do? Maybe I need to have um, two of these acorn squash. Maybe I need to have more chicken with it. Um, so it's just a good baseline to see what this is. So let's go ahead and get that butternut squash out. Um, 
let's see, I'm gonna set it on a little little plate. Came out and if this is how you want it, it's nice and get a spatula. They're nice and browned. So then we're going to take, let's get the rest of our, uh, let's just set this up our ingredients for our quinoa. Just make sure that this is at the desired thumbness. The, all the liquid has drained out of here. And it's perfect. Okay, so we're just going to leave it in here and we're going to add our other ingredients and add our Go ahead and stir. And the heat from the quinoa is really gonna plump up the, the, um, the cranberries. You could also use raisins in this. Uh, I've seen in a lot of recipes that use um, Raisins, like if you're stuffing a pepper or tomatoes, raisins and pine nuts. So this is, you know, just one. I just think that the pine nuts are nice. Nice if they add a little bit of a, um, to add a little bit of crunch because we have our, you know, what, what makes a, a good meal? Something that's varied in flavor, texture, color. And then we're looking for a variety. So, you know, certainly you're getting the crunchy, you're getting the sweet. We have the squash, which is, it can be a little sweet. It depends. Uh, these acorn squash are always a, a question mark. I eat them a lot for lunch. One day you get one that's very sweet. The next day it's average. Um, it just depends how ripe they are, but they're always a nice tender product. So, you know, it's nice to have um, the quinoa in there, which has a little bit of a bite. And we also have the the craisins for a little sweetness. And we also, don't forget, we had onions and garlic in here as well too. So that's gonna make a real nice. This makes a hearty side or to, you know, I'm for to get the nutrition profile that I was talking about, I would like, I'd probably put this with a chicken breast or some type of protein. Um, but this, I mean, you could see, even if you put some, if you're going vegan, you could have um, a, you know, key, um, tofu in here. That would be very nice. And let's just see. Then I have some crumpled on feta just to add like an, another dimension. So you have the sweet of the cranberries, the, the creaminess of the cheese, because um, once, once we put this on here, it'll get a little bit creamier. So you would, if you were eating this later, you wouldn't want to put the cheese on now, but that makes for like a really nice, and you could add additional, like they said, pomegranates would be nice, raisins would be nice, all of that is good. So we have this. We have our tuna, we have our tuna on the salad, we have our bowl. And then um, to get that profile that I was telling you about, we would also have just a side of fruit at the night in our other snack. So let's count that up. We would have um, one, at least two servings of vegetables in our acorn squash, another serving of fruit in our, um, in our tuna salad would be two servings, um, at least the vegetables. So two, three, four, Five fruit on our um, yogurt muffins. We have a serving of um, probably, I would say one serving of fruit between one whole apple and one whole banana in here. Um, so there you go. So that's a great getting more fruits and vegetables. So we checked all the boxes today.
um, for the Mediterranean plan for, for feeling fueled. So let's let's look at everything in a, in a whole. We have some our 23, we have our saturated fat at 6% of the total calorie. Uh, we have dietary fiber, 39 grams. The recommendation is anywhere from uh, women can be as low as 25, men can be 35 through 40. So we've got that box is covered as well. Um, we have a nice high protein diet. This is practically, let me tell you what, um, how, the new, how the protein comes in. It is 87 grams of protein for all this. Now that's if I, that's counting a three ounce um, chicken breast that I don't have shown here. So 87 grams of protein, 146 grams of carbohydrate minus 40 grams of fiber, which gives you a net of 106 grams of carbohydrate. And um, 43 grams of fat, which is 30% of your um, calories. So often when I, when I hand somebody uh, their calories and macronutrients and they look at that fat, I'm like, how is that even possible that I could have it that low? Well, picking some, picking whole foods, picking foods that are high in protein that have the right type of carb. When we use a lot of, um, today we used um, cinnamon, we used nutmeg. So we don't have to, we shouldn't feel the need to add additional fat to that cup, right? We don't need to add some more butter to it. It's very tasty on its own. It's nice and moist. Uh, um, the other thing we have honey on our yogurt, no fat there, except, you know, if you were to use a fuller fat yogurt, that's okay. It depends what your needs are. Um, in our um, baked quinoa, uh, that, or our baked acorn squash that's stuffed with quinoa, we just have a, a small amount of oil used to saute the oil and the garlic, the onion and the garlic. We have a small amount of oil that we put on our acorn squash. And in our tuna salad, we used um, olive oil. So again, we don't need to put anything additional on that um, bed of lettuce. It's a nice dressing in itself. We could add a little bit more of that, um, the lemon and olive oil if we wanted to, but right now I think if you cut that up, it's, it would be really good. So um, checking all the boxes for Mediterranean, we have five servings, of, a minimum of five servings of fruits and vegetables. We have a serving of fish. We have complex carbohydrates. We have um, a fermented dairy product. Uh, what else do we have? We we do have our serving of nuts. So we have just, it's just a great menu today to show you how to get it all in. It's not impossible, it just takes some planning. Um, so on days where we know, you know, I have this conversation with people every day, if you know that you're having a, you know, a carbohydrate rich lunch or you're having a low protein dinner, you know, trying to make those accommodations throughout the day. But I will tell you, even though you, you could make some of those adjustments throughout the day and come up with the, you know, you could still come up with a nice, um, like I told you, those daily totals for carb, fat, and protein. You could still come up with those um, in a, and from eating different foods throughout the day, maybe in a different combination, but having a carb balanced meal. And when I mean carb balanced, I mean that, that um, the net carb and the protein are pretty close. That's going to keep us fueled. That's going to um, really get us through the day and, and not needing a pick me up, so to speak. If, if you do need that pick me up, that might that um, that cup might really work for you. So that's an option. Other options, you know, you maybe want to have your fruit at that time. If you feel like you need another burst of protein, you could certainly have you know a cheese stick, um, peanuts, edamame seeds other kinds of nuts that are well balanced or a small portion of nuts, cheese, and maybe like a craisin or a raisin. All of those are really good and all those are really carb balanced. The nut family is great at being carb balanced, especially almonds. Um, you know, the, the protein I believe is around five grams and the net carb comes in around five grams. And I think five grams of fat. So it just makes them a really well-balanced um, snack. The other thing, in addition to eating carb balanced, is watching that fat intake. So, so if you have a very fat-laden meal, especially saturated fat, that could make you feel lethargic and kind of zap your energy, almost make you feel like you need to take a nap. And eating in large combinations, a high sat fat, high sodium, high calorie meal could make you feel like you just want to take a nap. Where can you get a high fat, high calorie, high sodium meal? We've talked about it many times, um, fast food or just eating out in general, right? Typical, even eating out at better restaurants, they're going to be 30% higher in sodium, saturated fat, 
fat and calories. So um, just prep, like we said, there was some things that we had in our pantry. So it's so easy to cook at home, to make our meals, to take more meals at home. And that's another part of the big initiative for eating sustainably is eating more meals at home, more plant-based meals. We had a couple of those here today. Um, it, it, to um, having more meals at home is also cost-effective. Um, so having some of these things in our pantry are really can help you um, feed your family and make your dollar go a lot further. And to keep those other things that we don't want down, like the the sap, fat, sodium, extra calories. Um, so those are some of the things. Um, the Also the initiative, let me just, I wanted to talk about National Nutrition Month at the end. And, and um, let me just tell you that this is uh, the 50th year of celebrating National Nutrition Month. And what it does is it's a way to increase awareness about our nutrition to bring to light what our current eating habits are, how we can improve them. And you know, as a dietetic student many years ago, you know, it was always our, you know, mission to do something for National Nutrition Month and make posters around campus and then at various um, career changes I've had in my life, putting things in the hospital, um, doing certain things in a nursing home, doing things in the community, you know, go ahead and um, providing libraries with some resources, with some really good, um, you know, highlighting some books that, sh that would be great reads, some good cookbooks. I'm always recommending cookbooks, um, always helping um, my clients trying to pick out the best recipes that fit with their family, with their lifestyle, with any cultural differences that they have and recognizing that, you know, we all, you know, that there are cultural differences out there. There's, um, and there's certainly regional differences as well. So trying to keep that in mind with that whole sustainability. Um, and the other thing that includes, we always talk about that is buying fresh when we can, buying local, buying foods in season. Um, when you buy foods in season, they're at their peak nutritional value. They're at the best price and um, they're readily available to us. Um, when you can't find something in the grocery store, you know, it's just probably not a good time to buy it, right? Because it's not in season and it's probably coming from very far away, which leads to that um, less sustainability and um, which is what we're trying to avoid. So what we wanna do is, you know, eat and write with the environment in mind, enjoy some more plant-based meals, maybe a few times a week experiment. And it doesn't mean that you have to become vegetarian, but trying to look at your plate, trying to revisit your plate and make that um, large, you know, instead of centering around the protein, centering around the vegetable, centering around, centering around something like this, you know, where you're having that nice, um, that nice serving of good complex carbohydrate with just a, a few additives in there um, to make it really well-rounded and a small serving of protein. It doesn't have to be big to get that 84 grams. I said, you know, maybe just a three ounce chicken breast, like a three ounce of some type of lean protein would round this out nicely. Um, purchase food with minimal packaging. That's another thing you could, lately I've seen some more initiatives to um, ditch some of the boxes and go towards more, um, you know, bags that could be reusable, bags that could be composted, um, all very important. Um, you know, buying foods when they're in season, we talk about that, give gardening a try, give composting a try, um, you know, plan your meals and snacks. Having a plan is the best way to ensure your success, no matter what your nutrition and wellness goals are. If you are trying to feel better, trying to increase your aerobic capacity, trying to run a half marathon, trying to walk a 5k, whatever your goals are, trying to keep up with grandkids, you know, having some type of plan in place, I'm going to um, try to walk this much. I'm trying, I'm going to try to increase my aerobic capacity. I'm going to try to get to the gym. If that's, if that is your um, goals, you know, to put those in place and to measure them frequently, you know, see what kind of food, when we talked about keeping food in the pantry, see what you have first in your pantry and in your freezer and go shopping there. Sometimes I have clients, they have, they have a freezer full of food. I said, we'll start there. That's a great way to plan. If you cannot plan um, at the beginning of the week, what all your foods are going to be, or your meals, I should say, what they're going to be throughout the week, which ideally is a, a great way to go. If you cannot do that, then perhaps it's a great idea um, either after dinner or before dinner to look in your freezer and see what foods you have in there. Make a list. You know, we have a chuck roast. We have some ground meat. We have some ground veal. 
um, there's a fish in there, you know, fish in there from a fishing trip a few years ago, whatever you have in your free either frozen vegetables, pierogies, whatever, um, go through there and say, okay, this might be something good for tomorrow night's dinner and take it out of the freezer then. Uh, it's great to do that because sometimes if we don't plan and we find ourselves at the end of the day looking to make dinner and it's a little deterrent because you have to defrost meat, you have to, to maybe prep something additionally. So by getting ready a day ahead of time, looking what's in your freezer, utilizing what you have on hand before purchasing more, I think is a great idea. Of course, you always, if you did happen to buy something you already have on hand, make sure you rotate that. Um, you know, use a grocery list and stick to your list, you know, so thinking, and we, we've talked about this so many times, not just that I'm going to have, you know, roast chicken on Monday, salmon on Tuesday, Wednesday, hazelnut fettuccine, Thursday, tacos, and Friday, meatloaf. Um, instead, of it, make sure that you put a vegetable with each of those. Make sure you put a starch, you know, roast chicken and um, green beans and red skin potatoes. Tuesday, um, meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and carrots. You know, make sure it's varied in texture, flavor, um, and color. So it's interesting. And when you do that, then when you go to the grocery store, you know, make your list from that, from that, um, from that menu and stick to your list. So if you do have, you know, instead of randomly going to the grocery store, and especially this time of year and in summer, everything looks so beautiful. You just don't want to throw things in your cart, um, vegetables into your cart, and then they um, go to waste perhaps in your vegetable bin. If you don't have a plan for them, sometimes they don't get used. So it's good to have a plan for those vegetables. Have Stick to your list so you could save money, um, decrease waste. That's the biggest thing. You don't want your food dollars right now um, more, more than ever. You don't want your food dollars going down the drain, out the window, in the garbage, however you want to say it, um, you know, because we have to really watch with the high cost of food right now. Um, eating a variety of foods, you know, again, eat your, eat your vegetables. We have uh, mostly frozen, uh, mostly fresh today. You can use frozen. You can, we also had some canned um, and you know, cook your meals at home, try new foods. Those are all things with this, um, with National Nutrition Month's message this year. So excited to be a part of that. I I will be speaking other places this month, um, definitely trying to engage people to rethink their nutrition if it needs to be. Maybe they're already on a good path, but it's a good time to uh, reevaluate what you're doing and um, proceed from there. So make sure that um, you check out the website and you see how these numbers break down and um, you know try some of these, put some of these things into place. Let me put everything so you can see it. So this is a lot of food and what else do we had? We had our grapes. And then, like I said, I would put a chicken breast uh, with that. We have our oatmeal cups, well, yogurt for breakfast, oatmeal cups for a snack. Um, for lunch, we could have our tuna on a bed of lettuce or we could have it on a more balanced tortilla. And then we would have our quinoa stuffed acorn squash and again a three ounce serving of protein with that and then we would have some grapes at night and you would hit all of those nutritional targets so um, remember if you, um, if you choose a variety of foods and stick to some of the principles we talked about today you'll stay on the path to wellness thank you so much and have a great day